Hey, I'm Decath Long Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019. This is Stage Racer, episode number 51. Very happy that we have signed with Mitchelton Scott for next season. I was actually really starting to get worried that we weren't going to get a contract, especially after they said, you're not going to get a contract. And then the next day we got one. That was after winning a stage of La Vuelta. That really helped. So with contract signed for next year, we can now focus our energies on finishing off this season, well, as, as strong as we possibly can. And that means continuing on with La Vuelta and trying to do something here in the Tour of Spain that resembles a reasonable finish. Uh, looking at where I stand, We're only 12th overall after losing time in that last one, and that was pretty frustrating. Uh, but I do think we could still bounce back. I do have the points for the KOM at the moment. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the team objective is uh, entering the stage. That can make a real difference. But here on stage number 7 of 21, there's a lot of climbing. A lot of climbing left to do in this one. I made... A vital error last time that really cost me. Of course, it shouldn't have been such a vital error, but it was. It did turn out to be a vital error, so got to accept it is what it is, and we're now a few minutes behind. The good thing is that makes me less of a target. It gives me a little more freedom to attack late, maybe take time back, get another stage victory, and earn my way back in, a la Thibaut Pino, the master of losing time early in a grand tour to only then get ignored and go on, claim a stage, pick up a couple minutes, and suddenly be back in the mix. Then everybody seems to remember at the end how he's fighting for third or fourth or fifth place. In terms of the favorites, I am 7th favorite on stage. Definitely not one of the top guys, but I'll probably be behind the others by a small margin, and that could give me that freedom, or at least to, to sit on and force somebody else to do the work and, and them tire out. Uh, I would gladly grab KOM points if possible uh, especially th the two category two climbs but I think I'll largely be focused on the final standings now uh, that also meaning the stage victory or position I don't presume that the team's going to suddenly drop me as leader but I've seen crazier things happen on here I've seen being a heavy favorite over a teammate and then pick the teammate over me. on the program. the interest begins at the 100 kilometer mark. From there, the riders will cross two third and two second category climbs before attacking the inferno of the El Master for the first category summit finish. So, was introduced to the Vuelta in 2016 and was an instant success. It only tops out at 970 meters, but there's nothing under 11.5% along its 4 kilometer slope. And there are several sections at 20% and above. Oof. It's one for red jersey and polka dot jersey contenders. Okay, we got a big stage, big final climb, 4K at the end. Very steep. That one's going to be a rough climb. Uh, in addition to it being a rough climb, the conditions today are apparently extremely rough as we're looking at negative conditions for everyone. It's windy and let's see, where is the final climb? We're here now. Oh, there's the finish. So into a, a headwind at the finish making it that much tougher. 
So strong wind, apparently it's hot. Otherwise there would not be negative twos pretty much across the board other than Ben Herman's. The gap is widening. It's now over two minutes. Breakaway already fairly established. We've certainly opened a gap. Number of riders that I'm familiar with, guys that have ridden on my teams in that break. That break still has not formed terribly well. I think we're just now really settling down. It's a quarter of the way into the stage before that's happened. 13 riders off the front, one in no man's land in between. He's just about caught that front group, but it's 13 versus one. He'll have nothing left by the time he reaches them, so I would imagine he'll come back to us. Yep, gap's starting to open. It's going the wrong direction. He was down within a minute. So we'll call that a breakaway of 13. Now, with all these negative race day conditions, you've got to assume that it's not just my team who the entire team hit the wrong end of the bell curve now in real life something like that can happen it's called food poisoning and that cooks fired and they hire somebody else and you try again uh, or some sort of bug that runs through but of course we're not noted for any sort of actual illness here as we go forward so 13 riders off the front the other guy has come back to the peloton uh, one rider has cleared the other 12 at the moment as they head towards the top of this first climb, this Category 3. Yes, I still have a lead in that, and a decent lead at the moment, but four and a half minutes to those 13, they're going to pick up plenty of points today that I can't do anything about. But then you've got those last two climbs, so we'll have a chance to make up for it. Nobody's above eight, that's good. On to climb number three. All 13 back together, and their lead is three and a half minutes. We are starting to pull them back, so looks like we have picked up the pace a bit here with 65K to go. Ron Dag's already pretty tired. I've lucked out a little bit. The entire team, besides myself, were on Baradour duties, so breakaway duties. Fortunately, None of them join the break. So with 135 strong in the break, uh, in the peloton, all 13 still away. Three of them have pulled out a bit of a gap over the other 10, and the gap is slowly coming back together. These last two climbs could shrink that gap in a fairly short amount of time. Okay, Herman's now on to protection, coming on up. 225 the gap, 130 in the peloton. It's all set up for these last two climbs. Also, as we approach these last two climbs, we better bring it on back down. And we're looking at one little rise here, one little descent, and then we're gonna start the climb as we round this corner, 7.8 kilometers. Right about 6% is the gradient on this one. And I already enter it slightly below 100% as the pace is pretty hot. So 8K, 6%, uh, it's not the hardest climb. But it's definitely not an easy climb. And when you take the bell curve into account, it's gonna do some damage within the field. You can see this peloton is gonna get a lot smaller. It's already down to 110. So we've dropped 20 riders already. Three of them are my teammates. Alright, cool. Times two speed. This would be where I'd like to grab some points, but the points are already done. Uh, Barbero, first one over the top, or at least up to second place on the KOM at just nine points. So I still have an eight-point lead heading to the final climb of the day. Looking pretty good to retain that, but let's see what kind of points are available on that last climb. It's going to be a massive one. 
10 points. 10 points to the top. Okay. What was this one? 5. So it's like a category 1. I'm getting a decent amount of recovery here. I'm down to Banajek, Hermans, and Osorio. Osorio won't last much longer. He's on protection duties right now. We've got this one more little rise coming up. That'll probably finish off Osorio. But Banashek should get me through the base of the climb. Hermans should get me K, maybe two. And then I will only have to ride solo for the last couple K, uh, which would be good. But we're seeing an attack from Quintana. Wow, I'm not worried about him. Let the others chase him down. Uh, Sorio, as predicted, just making it over the top. Hermans having a little problem here. He is. Down to 91. Ooh. That crash left a few riders behind. That's good. Herman still has not recovered. What is going on with you guys? I'm all alone up here. That's not good. There's nothing I can do about Herman's either. 4.6k to go. I'm going to use my gel here right about the base because the energy is going to go fairly quick. So three riders left off the front. They have one minute. So that first group of the breakaway is still out there. Landa already pushing the tempo. Landa's moving to a new team in real life. I wish I could remember which team it was off the top of my head. But he's finally going to take over as a team leader. Now 95, and the three breakaway riders have been reeled in. Surrounded by contenders, so not worried about attacking things too hard, but we're already down to 1.5k. 1 1.3. Still have yellow bar. 1k. Still have yellow bar. 800 meters. To Mulan, Perrier, and Landa. Four hundred meters. No stage win, but this will be worth some points and a good position. It looks like there's a little gap between those three. Ten seconds. I might be fourth unless somebody on my far right hand side is ahead of me. And fourth on the stage. Not bad at all. Nairo Quintana fifth. Haig, Martinez, and Latour are your top eight. Soler comes across ninth. And Bennett tenth ahead of Garrett Thomas and Lopez, Sosa, Froome, and Gegenhart. Outside of Berrier, who's a game regen. The top 19, anyway, are nothing but big names. Oh, and, and then, you know, myself. Not quite a big name yet. Getting there. I think I'm up to Continental Renown. Or at least National, for sure. But yeah, fourth on the stage. Not too shabby. There we are, four riders right behind me. I would imagine there's gonna be a little gap there. There might be a little bit behind the four of us, or five of us. And there is, 36 seconds to the next, 24. I thought it was like 12 seconds when I crossed the line, but okay. I'm not worried about that little bit of time because that does move me back up a little bit, up into 11th. Uh, Barry one second ahead of Demoulin, somehow still in the race lead. So confusing how this 20-year-old climber is already in 82 in the mountains. But how's this 21-year-old climber already in 80? And a 79 in the hills. <laughs> Atlanta, 39 seconds down. Martinez, 52. Soler, just over a minute. Bennett, 
Gegenhardt inside two, Lopez, Latour, and Haig. And there we are. Now you can see the gaps behind us starting to open. And we're starting to kind of fall into a little no man's land in between. The haves and the have nots. I do pick up some points, enough to retain the KOM lead, but only by four points. And for the under 25, still third place. Okay, so he's still 25. Oh yeah, fourth on the stage over third is so bad. Uh, we do get seven points though. 81 from leveling up, and we're also just over a day away from picking up 65 points. I mean, we are getting quite close to a level. This could be a good time for it. A lot of stages to go, but the fitness peak is still a ways off. I don't think it'll hit before the end of the tour. If it does, it'll just be a couple stages prior to the end. And I don't think so. I'd have to crunch the numbers three times whatever, about 13. So cover about 40% of the bar. But looking at where the bar was, you got to say that that's about what we have left to cover. 35-40%, maybe 45%. I mean, the actual number is in there if you check it out. It's not that hard to do the math on it, but I would definitely say that we're not going to get there in time. And if we do, it's going to be only just. Uh, stage 8 here is a pretty straightforward one, just decent little Category 2 climb and a small uphill finish. It's going to be quite easy to stay in the group, but if I were to quick sim this, it would easily open up gaps that are unrealistic, just based simply off the stage profile and not the reality that is the real stage profile. And by that, I mean the short version being it's a hills classification. A series of leaps that will bring the riders to the province of Navarra in northern Spain. The first jump has landed us in Catalonia for a stage that starts in Valls and finishes in Igualada. This should be a day for green jersey contenders, especially a sprinter who can climb. But the second category, Puerto de Montserrat Ascent, <laughs> coming as it does towards the end of the 168-kilometer route, introduces a degree of uncertainty. The outcome depends on the attitude of the sprinters and their teams. All right, we're going to sit tight. It's going to be a little while before we actually get to any sort of action for this one. Five points available for that climb. And at the finish, how is that anything <laughs> at all other than just a straight sprint? The climb that will decide this stage. Seven and a half kilometers in length, 6.6% average gradient with a max of 8.5%. It's pretty straight. Just gentle. Relatively gentle slope. That's definitely not a serious climb. Today, plus one race day condition, but not just is it a plus one, you can see it's a real positive with the fitness level at 100%. Mountain, 83. Hills, 82. Resistance, 78. Even the stamina, looking good. Uh, downhill, 72. Could be a factor there towards the end of the stage. You're not going to see a breakaway. You're not going to see a solo victory today. If I would have quick simmed, Alaphilippe would have won the stage. The pace is really high by a minute. The we shouldn't see too many attacks. So as much as I'd rather skip over this stage, it's not going to happen. But we'll push right to the Category 2 climb and see where we're at as we approach the top. Pick up points if I can. Points just for the four riders? Three riders. 
and there are four riders off the front with a two minute lead that's not a big big lead they could probably be reeled in, reeled in but it also depends on who it is Polanc, De La Cruz, Massey, Kircher a couple of those guys could stay away with the right gap and at two and a half minutes I would imagine they will so we might be scraping by for one point uh, same for the sprint point here time bonuses nothing going for it but here we go into the climb there's the base there's the right the there the 8k otherwise I would already do something Seven K. Herman's even further back, but staying fresh compared to the other guys. Cruising at an eighty five, one rider off the front, but the other three still over a minute ahead as we are down to 5k four and a half k I may try to make a move here in a little bit maybe the final two and a half to three k especially if I can catch those three go second over the top I could pick up three points and it's not like I won't recover before the final climb there's 3k and we're just about to pull in two of them so now it's just two riders off the front two and a half k I don't need to attack the peloton I just need to go over the top first 1.8 1.5 1.6 that hoke off the back 1.2 let's catch up to this guy here Taylor Cruz, last one out front. I think I'll catch him. 500 meters? No. There you go, second over the top. Up to 22, seven point lead. We already start the process of recovery. Peloton down to 94. De La Cruz left off the front. He's going to open that gap back up as nobody's willing to chase right now. So that's at 50 seconds. Now we're starting to chase him down as we reorganize and some of the riders recover. And we're about to begin the descent. 26 second gap. Little flat section there. And now we're going to go down once again. Final 10K. There's nothing doing on that finish, so any one of the 94 could win this, especially with a little bit of recovery, which looks like my teammates haven't done, so I suppose not everybody's going to finish this one, but 6k to go on a fairly flat section. Let's use the gel. And now I'm starting to get the, if you're not going forward, you're going backwards. So we move back to the front. And then we're going to start sliding backwards again. Here's, oh, there's Hermans. Okay, Hermans. Give me a little lead out here, will you? 3K for him. 2.5K, speed up a little more. And he's... Dun, 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 dun. Now he's done. <laughs> there we go. All right, 1K, 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 and sprint. What? Nobody's left. Nobody's left. Oh, here they come. Here's the actual sprinters, but I'll get a couple seconds. Here comes Alaphilippe. Oh, it's Michael Matthews. Wow, he came really late. Fabio Fellini for the stage win. I claim second place. That's right, second. Michael Matthews third. Pachikar, Froome, Gaudu, Bennert. Youngles, Martinez, and Gegenhardt. Alphalipe only 11th. 
So those guys are actually more tired than I thought. And I used up the red bar right to the end, so we ran out of red bar right to finish. Plenty of yellow still to go. So considering I had no business even being in the top 15 on the stage, second place, that's good. And by now, if you watch my other PCM series, I'm sure you've already heard the news and the reason why I've got a very limited time of late. Still 334 down. That I've been having to manage very, very carefully. Good evaluation on the stage. That's going to give me 13 points. 68. I'm going to get 65 overnight. Next stage, we may level up. Possibly, depending on what's going on. Next climbing sort of stage, anyway, as we're just short three points. But anyway, I, I hope that this is the last time that I am forced to record straight through the episode, get as much content as I can within that time frame, to bypass the editing, rendering of videos, and shorten that time uh, in order to get done what I need to do. I have been recording a, a bit more here. Uh, this is my fifth episode of today that I have recorded, uh, and it's fairly late on the evening before this is to be posted. Big climbing stage here for stage number nine. This will start to determine some positions. And looking at race day condition, there's a lot of negatives around me. What is the weather? 35 sunny periods, but my recovery is combining to make me okay. Uh, we are at 62.3 and we collect three per day. So let's see, 38 is going to be. 13 days, 13 days, just past the window. The Vuelta will end right before we hit our fitness peak, which what I want it for anyway is the the World Championships. That That's my target. It would have been nice to catch a few stages here, but whatever, it's okay. Perfectly okay. There we go. Big decisive stage. This will be the last one for this episode. Three big climbs, the last climb, big triple, up, slide down, up, flat, up. Consider three separate climbs, but it is in reality more like one super climb. The stage is just 96.2 kilometers in length. So this is one of those relentless climbing days. Right off the bat, just a couple K in. We start our first climb. I'm not even in the top 10 favorites. That's got to be a resistance thing. The up and up. I'm sure. Certainly not stamina. Stamina's got zero effect on a 96 kilometer stage. 180 plus is where that kicks in, or at least I think that's where the standard was. Anything below that, your stamina is not a factor. Greater here which then impacts essentially your resistance bar. And you can see all the guys at the top, high resistance guys other than Barrier, who's in form, unlike myself, who's just fit. The first category, Col Dordino, is crossed off 20 kilometers in the saddle. And then it's on towards the special category Col de la Galina. Both of those verge on 2,000 meters. But that barrier is broken with a first category finish on the Altus El Scortals den Camp. To add to the challenge, the Engelusters section of the last climb offers four kilometers of gravel road. Ooh. Gravel at the end on this one. Fun stuff, fun stuff. 
I don't have the cobble rating for that, but that's 4k worth too. That's going to do some damage to me. How am I already fading? What's going on here? Really? I'm already struggling? Easy, buddy. Easy. Single breakaway rider so far. They've got two minutes. Uh, points will be available at the top. 4k to go. The lead rider is now more than two minutes ahead of the peloton. Three and a half. My rate of loss came down a bit when I slowed down. And so did others, it looked like. 117 left. Now we're starting to push the tempo. 2k to go. And things are leveling off a bit here near the top. And attack. now I want to attack. I want the points at this category one climb. Three riders off the front. What is available in points? Two points for fourth or below. Okay, so we grab some points there. Fourth over the top. 24 now in total. Nine points clear at the top of the competition. Next one, also category that's going to have a lot of points. I'll get full recovery here, but Van Hoek, for Wilst, and Rondax are all gone. And they're over four minutes behind, so I doubt that they're going to catch back up. Peloton at 111. And we speed through the descent. We've got Herman, Sosorio, and Banaszek, our top climbers anyway, left here. But they're on minus one, minus one, and minus three race day conditions, respectively. Again, it's hot weather today, so it is pretty much a negative for almost every rider. It's not affecting me, and I did end up with a plus one today. So I'm back to a mountain rating. 83, resistance 78. Downhill's not going to be a factor because there won't be any attacking on either of the two descents. This climb is a lot steeper than the last one. We're going to hit the same height in less time, 11.9k. 1,900 meters worth of climbing at 8.5% gradient. Dennis, always having issues or attacking. Okay, big steep climb. I don't want to overdo this one. I've got a Sorio Og protection right now. Banajek's in a good position to also help. But where is Hermans? Hermans is back here a little bit. Uh, what I want to do is not what I was thinking I wanted to do because he's too far down. Hermans is in the wrong possession position right now. Eight riders off front. That's a bigger group than before. His points are down there, but here we go, pulling these guys back. Normal breakaway guys, but there's Yates and Froome Ciccone off the front. Millard, Haas. Not even halfway up the climb. We still have 7k to go. Energy-wise, I think I'm doing just fine. 6k to go. By just fine, I mean just. <laughs> Not by a wide margin. Only just. 5k to go. Not as many riders off the front anymore. I think they're down to just four as they're all split up riding solo. 4k to go. Banajek dropped, Osorio and Hermans both on the verge, 65 riders left, 3k to go to the top, still doing okay for now, and definitely could pull that gap back here, and go third over the top, this would be worth some decent points, 6 points, ooh it's 353, that is a big gap, you're going to get a stage winner out of those front runners. Okay, here we go. The acceleration. Can we catch Ciccone? 1k to go. It looks like I most certainly can catch Ciccone. And I've actually gotten a break here. 
started my own little break. Big points over the top. They're heading downhill, so they've got to make sure to keep warm and make no mistakes on their trajectory. Thirty points now. Yates is on twenty. Barrier sixteen. Froome in fourth. Team leaders have their minds fixed on today's goal. On acrobatic descent and should recover a little bit, but it's not really happening. I need to uh, allow that recovery. I've opened up a bit of a gap over the field, and there's one rider chasing Barrier, Yates, oh, and then the Froome out front. Oh, the is on the there we go. Recovery's happening now. Recovery's happening. I'm going to need to sit up and recover a bit more, though. Let's do it. Ease off, ease off. Before we get to the bottom, we need to recover. I'd rather be caught by those guys. I, I don't think I'm going to just go off and win this thing. I'm just trying to take a head start, really. But I do have a minute 20 over the chase group. Not quite fully recovered there. Right at 72. And there's Yates. Hello, Yates. My gap to Yates is about the same as Barry's gap behind me, which is about the same to the field behind him, meaning it's not so good. Uh, 24k to go. I better grab water while, while I'm riding solo. There it is. And I'm going to sit up some here. I'd rather get caught. And now I can force Perrier to do the work because he's the race leader. This climb is feared by many riders. The percentages are very high. And there's the field. Peloton of 25. Back in it. Riding at a 76. Already down to 21. Four riders dropped almost immediately. There's going to be a little descent over this first climb, and I'll need to recover a little bit there. Still potentially third over this climb. I'll accelerate at the last moment. 1.5k. 1k. 800 meters. There's Yates. Coming back at him, but Froome looks like he's off to win the stage. 500 meters. 15 kilometers to the finish line. Falling behind. A team leader is falling behind. Not sure I went over third there. That's okay. Uh, seven point lead over Yates. Froome's coming too, though. A little bit of recovery there. 15 and a half K to go. No real break left. 19 riders chasing two. One's just ahead. Looks like we'll pull Yates back here in a moment. And we do. So now it's 20 chasing one, but it's a four minute lead to Chris Froome. Makes me curious. What is his lead? Froome has, or what is his deficit? It's almost 10 minutes. Okay, 18 of us, and I'm about to hit the top of this one, but not a lot of energy left. Only 10 kilometers left. Up to the top of that one, there's points again, 33 now, now 7 ahead of room. But not much for the finish. Oh, and here's the gravel section. This is... I'm going to lose time here. Or is it just on the flat? Will it go back to paved as we go uphill? Oh, that would be awesome if it does. 13 riders chasing one. Here we go. 6k to go. Gel just kicking in. And I'm going to sit on gently, as gently as I can, because I do not have much energy here. Here comes the first attack. Martinez. Landa chasing. Demoulin chasing. Very not really covering it off very well. Neither am I. Those five immediately get away. Now four getting away. Uh, the gap to Froome is 
getting covered very quickly. My gel's already done. I'm sitting with this group, seven. Nope, there's the next one attacking off the front. That's uh, Gegenhart going. I don't have the energy to go with anything until late right now, three and a half K to go. Two point eight. Getting closer. I might be able to leave these guys behind late. Two K to go. There goes the sprint. The strong I'm gonna attack. Off front, there you go. Now go my pace. Ninety one. Try that. Got a 14 second gap to those guys. See if I can open that up a bit. Close things down in front of me. They're heading for the finish line. Demoulin gets there first. Barry a second right there with him. It's crazy. He's got to be on a really high form right now. Froome, Landa, Martinez. Gegenhardt's going to take sixth. But I should be here for seventh. Run out of energy just before the line, but open that gap a little bit. Katana also. Going off the front, takes 8th, and then a pretty big gap to those guys behind us. So I definitely left them behind, but also ran out of energy before the top, so I didn't have much more. I think I did about the right thing there. I might have been able to go with Gegenhart when he went, and maybe 30 seconds better, but that would have been a real risk. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, Lopez Knight, Carapaz 10th, Soler, Bennert, Haig, Izagira. Comes the next group of riders. There's Yates, 15th. Kamna, wow, he's here. Thomas Latour. Amador. And Ineos rider in 20th. That's Pajikar. And there you go, there's your top 20. That'll help our position a bit. I mean, it wasn't the best stage, 7th only. Uh, I wasn't in the top 10 favorites at all. Team thought I should finish in fifth, though. So they won't be too pleased with that. But is it worth three points? Oh, it might be. It might be. Froome took third on the stage, so they caught him before the end. There's still good points at the end, though. So he might have taken the KOM away from me with no points entering the stage. The or only a few, anyway. Wow, and they got him right before the line. He was actually in the group with him. It wasn't a gap. So there you go. Those guys, same time. I finished 231 down. I gapped these guys by a full minute other than Quintana. And ended up 30 seconds. Yeah, now that's why I was saying it could have been about 30 seconds better, but maybe not. We're back into the top 10, so that's good. Pretty big gap behind me to Jack Haig. He's almost, well, he's over a minute and a half behind me. Uh, Quintana is two and a half down, and then gaps are very big. I'm just four seconds behind Lopez now, a minute behind Bennert, and Soler, just 10 seconds better. Uh, but it looks like I'm now starting to fall into a range of sixth to ninth. Gegenhardt fifth, Martinez, Landa, Barrier drops to second, Moulin moves into the race lead three seconds ahead. We've got ourselves a battle. Froome does not pick up enough points. I've got a three-point lead in the KOM. Fourth in the under-25s, almost 10 minutes ahead of the next closest. We're 15th as a team. That just goes to show how little I can get out of the team. A poor and bad poor and first equals seven points, and that is a level up. Level 22, we do get improvement of attributes. Next level is skill point only. But here we go. Puncher option comes with a plus one, plus one. Plus one to resistance. That's going to be a big one for me today. Classics. Wow, plus four to cobbles is nice. Plus one on mountain and a plus two on flat is definitely not bad. Hills at 79 is already 
pretty much all I need. Stage races. Okay, so plus one to flat, a plus two to mountain, and 82 base. That's mouthwatering. And it actually does add one to cobbles. Recovery goes plus two. Resistance is a plus one. Uh, ooh, climber. Okay, looky here. Oh, I think we have a winner. Flat plus one. Mountain plus two. So there's the 82 that we get out of Stage Racer. Uh, cobble plus one. So even that has a bonus. Acceleration plus one. Resistance plus two. My recovery is already good. It's going to hit an 80 here. The Stage Racer would have made it an 81, but I don't care about that one more point. I do care about the extra resistance point and acceleration point. So, there you go. There you go. Uh, time trial. Nothing new in there. Sprinter. That's actually almost tempting. And puncher. Now, evolution of potential. How are we looking in that department? Mountain 85. Let's still max that puppy out. Hills 80 to 84. Time trial, prologue, cobbles. None of those are looking too great, but even the time trial is still looking good. Uh, acceleration is looking pretty nice. But there you go. I think we're going to go that route. I like the resistance plus two. It would be nice to pick up some stamina, but none of them are giving me an option for that. So this time we focus on resistance and recovery, and two resistance is the best option for me, along with two mountain. I think that's going to put us into kind of another realm, you know? Uh, it's time. I, I definitely need to start paying more attention to the riders around me and knowing about them because we're definitely in. We're in it now. I'm going to move forward today. I'm not going to have another stage. We're going to wrap things up here in just a moment. But I want to see where we're at. If that changed the rating at all. There we go, new day. It's a new day. We're back from the dead. No, we're not back from the dead. We weren't dead. But things are looking good. Level 22. We are in 80 now. With an 82 mountain rating. The hills and time trial are already good. Prologue could use some work. Flat rating definitely could use some work. Uh, sprint cobbles, just to be well-rounded, could use some work. Uh, and then the, the stamina. The resistance, it's almost there now. It is almost there now. 76 is a pretty decent rating. Of course, getting stamina and resistance, you know, stamina to a 75 and resistance to an 80 would be ideal. The downhill, a few points. Uh, cobble and sprint, just enough to be tolerable but the flat rating I think the flat rating needs the most now uh, that and the prologue but even then prologue I'm, I think I'm just a couple points away on prologue from that being a thing just because the, those stages are short there's not huge time gaps no matter whether you're atrocious or grand champion there's not going to be a huge time gap. But in the time trial itself, there it is. But that definitely moved me into the elite category. Now it's time to start expecting more from myself. Now that I do have not just a good mountain rating, but a very good mountain rating. It's not the best. 
and I really can't complain about the resistance anymore. Still be better. Still has room for improvement. Still needs to improve a bit. But it's it's definitely no longer bad, and it's no longer even just tolerable. It's it's certainly okay. Borderline good now. So we are 16th in the World Tour rankings, 1,300 points. And in the Super Prestige, in the top 10, in 8th place with 1,714 points at this point, I think I could pull together a pretty good race. But a lot of the guys are right here in this race around me. I mean, the, the top 8 are all GC guys. Michael Matthews is the first one that's not. And he's at this race as well, picking up points. And then there's Froome in 10th. And then there's the the oh-so-famous Rowan Dennis that the, the game can't get enough of saying his name, whether he's in the race or not. Followed by your first straight-up pure sprinter in Sam Bennett. And then another hybrid sprinter like Matthews in Sagan. Wow, Max Cantor in 14th. Good for him. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. And like I said, I'm hoping that this is the last episode that doesn't have the editing, rendering. I know we get more stages when we do it the other way. Uh, a little less bore of the beginning of stages where there's not much happening. So I know that's a preferred method. I'm actually up to 11 wins this season. Not too shabby, of course. Half of that came in one race, but still. I'll take it. Be sure to hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.